Hi, it's Justin with Grand River Wood Co. And I'm going to be going through step by step how to make a uh, epoxy river coffee table like this with a uh, map of burl. So I skipped the boring part of making the mold for the uh, pour. It's basically grabbing. Um, melamine or uh, plywood and covering it all in tuck tape or uh, sheathing tape and that stops for, uh, the epoxy from sticking to the wood and you can see the black silicone on the sides and all the edges and on the the wood there and that just helps stop leaks so the total volume of this pour was uh, nine liters total six liters in the beginning this is the second three liters going in right now and another three after when the epoxy shrunk a little bit and um, soaked into the wood um, to, to stop that just do it all in one pour um, you can overfill it a little bit and as it shrinks it'll uh, even out Uh, so you can see here I'm removing the clamps uh, to hold down the slabs because if you don't hold them down they're basically just going to float and you're going to have a whole bunch of epoxy uh, sitting right underneath the slabs and that's just a lot of money wasted when you can just clamp them down. Uh, you can glue them with like silicone but I've had problems where the silicone doesn't cure when it's completely underneath the slab so it's easier just to throw a 2x4 or something over and clamp it to your bench. You can see lining the uh, wood with the tuck tape easily separates when uh, you're demolding. And you can see how much silicone I use to stop any leaks because, again, you don't want to waste epoxy uh, pouring all over your floor. For all my river tables, I use uh, Chill Ice Epoxy. It's made for deep pours like all these river tables. If you were to use a different kind of epoxy, you'd have to use multiple multiple pours at like a quarter of an inch half an inch so when you have a two inch thick table uh, that's a long time to keep adding pours matching the color of epoxy that you wanted to get originally uh, originally so this was all done in one pour and then well, usually one pour but i had to add the second on just because uh, i miscalculated how much i needed and again you can see how easily this comes off the uh, mold because of that tuck tape with getting a really nice uh, burl slab, I wanted to go with a transparent epoxy so I can show off the uh, nice figure of the grain. So after I demold my slabs, I like to take a chisel and uh, take off the edges where the epoxy is level. Because it's actually pretty sharp and I've cut myself a couple times. So it's easier just to um, just scrape off the quick little edge there and uh, this makes it easier and safer to handle. So I talked about overfilling your molds before uh, to have to not pour twice. Um, and to save on the epoxy when you're doing the overpour, you run a little bead of silicone around just so it acts like a dam. And you can see me uh, scraping it off. You don't have to if um, you're flattening yourself with like a router sled. But if you're bringing it to another company to run it through their planer, it's kind of just nice to take it off for them because you don't want like jamming the machine or something like that. So for my slab flattening I use a uh, spoil board flattener from today, uh, Tools Today and it has four carbide cutters but I take the very flat bottom two off. Uh, I get a Better surface finish on the epoxy, uh, removing them. 
so I'll just have the two uh, side cutters. Um, it costs more to get ones with uh, carbide bits, but you save more in the long run not having to replace the bit, like the whole bit total, and you can just turn the little cutters um, over when one side gets chipped or dull or broken. I've actually broken a couple bits of the, uh, the very corners. So I just rotated it and I'm still using it today. I'll have a link in the description uh, to the one I'm using here if you would like to pick one up. So what I'm using here is a homemade router sled. It's basically it's made out of uh, scrap that I had laying around, attached it all together, made it nice and sturdy so it wouldn't flex when the router is going over. I'll show you a better angle of it in a second here. You can see it's just a simple uh, melamine and like a 2x4 there just to kind of keep it straight and you just slide it back and forth and when if your bench is nice and flat it'll, you'll leave a very good finish and keep all your stuff very flat for the next process. It definitely takes a lot of time and it's definitely very messy uh, doing it this way. Some people have dust collection on it. Um, I, haven't very found, I haven't found a very good way to do it. Um, doesn't get enough suction to um, make it worthwhile and it just kind of makes it more difficult to do it. Uh, I'm taking like a quarter inch uh, per pass. I could do more, like this router is definitely um, strong enough to do it. Uh, it's just preference just to do uh, smaller cuts here. I'm using a, a Triton router. They're like three and a half horsepower one. I don't recommend it that much. Um, I've had a few problems with it. It's definitely not very comfortable to um, operate it's kind of made for uh, two-hand use and just sliding it back and forth is uh, a little uncomfortable so right now i'm mixing up some uh, chill diamond it's a faster curing epoxy it cures in about 24 hours so i'm just filling up the uh, little knot like the burl knots here i couldn't fill them before because uh, if well, flattening, I would have um, basically exposed uh, new voids here, so it's easier just to wait until you're done flattening and then fill it after. Uh, after flattening, I sometimes use this little uh, handheld belt grinder. It's got like a 36 grip belt on it. Uh, it's pretty strong. It's very fast at removing a lot of the uh, material. So you definitely want to keep it moving or you'll uh, basically ruin the whole flattening job you uh, spent a long time doing. So just quickly going over the high spots that the uh, router left and then I can uh, move on to uh, the hand sander. This just speeds up the process a little bit. After it's sanded to about 80 grit and it's nice and flat, uh, I'll trim off the edges um, to the final size, or at least very, very close to the final size that I need with the uh, Makita track saw. Works really well, get about uh, a little over two inches cut depth and makes nice straight lines. So what I'm doing here is I flipped over the table so the top is on flat on my bench and I'm cutting a 30 degree angle offset to all the uh, all the sides and I think it just gives it a, uh, a better look than all the other tables out there. And now the real fun begins. Lots and lots of sanding. Uh, so I go up to about 120 grit. And then uh, I start water popping. And you'll see here in a second. You basically um, 
just spray spray your work down or um, just like a, a damp cloth and you're raising the grain to leave a better finish in the end you can see yeah you can see here I'm spraying it down you don't you don't want to like soak it just enough to just get it damp and then uh, wipe all the excess off so it doesn't um, just get uh, too soaking wet there and it's all you're also cleaning off all the dust and dirt uh, from the uh, prior grits So this is a, uh, a transfer punch. They come in big sets, usually on Amazon or some other store. Uh, they have multiple sizes, so you pick the one that fits the whole size you've already drilled. And it'll always be center to uh, where you want to drill. So after the holes are all drilled and the inserts are put in, uh, I start finish sanding. And I start finish sanding at 240 grit and move up to 320. I stop wet, or, uh, I stop water popping after 240 and I just wipe it down um, with a damp cloth, but I'm not looking to water pop. I'm just uh, wiping all the dirt off. Uh, I'm not very good at sanding, so I'm not going to give you any techniques on how to sand. So I'm still new to using Osmo, so if you're looking for a more in-depth video on how to apply it, you definitely want to go to a different video because this isn't it. But you want to use um, a very little amount, like as least as much as you can, and you buff it on with a, uh, a scotch brite pad, a white scotch brite pad that doesn't um, scratch up or mark your work here. And I'm just using a, a cheap. $20 buffer here and you just want to slowly work it in and buff it and buff it until it's basically nothing left and it's just a, a nice smooth finish there. And this is the end result. I think it came out really nice. The epoxy was just as I imagined. Nice uh, partial see-through look to it. Showed off the grain and the burl. And the finish came out really, really nice. So let me know if you guys like it. Leave a comment. And uh, see you guys later.